Now we were already pretty impressed when we drove the regular Ford Puma, even though it's a one litre mild hybrid crossover, it's actually got a really sweet chassis setup. So this should be even better, right? This is the Ford Puma ST. Much like the Fiesta ST, it has a 1.5 litre turbocharged three cylinder petrol engine, produces 200 horsepower, 320 newton meters. So what does this have over the regular Ford Puma? Well, first of all, let's talk about the styling. It is only really slightly different from the Ford Puma ST line in that you have ST badging and you have slightly different uh, visuals to it. So you have darker door mirrors, you have a contrasting black roof, but there is an option to add a panoramic sunroof if you wish. You do also get a black rear spoiler, although that is pretty much the same as what you get on the regular ST line. More importantly, the chassis sits a little bit lower and it rides on these 19 inch wheels, which are the biggest that they fit on any Ford Puma. Now it gets LED headlights as standard and a couple of different features like these black surrounds here across the bottom of the bumper that surrounds the fog lights. The grill is all black too, but it also now has ST badging and there's a little bit of a front splitter which is branded with Ford Performance and gives the chin a little bit more presence. The sporty look continues around the back where you have that big black spoiler, black lettering as well for the Puma badge and big ST logo here on the back too, just in case somebody didn't realize you're driving the ST and hadn't spotted the large twin exhaust sticking at the back. There's also a bespoke rear diffuser and reversing camera, which comes as part of the driver assistance pack. The Puma ST is also equipped with an electric tailgate. And what's very useful is when this pops up, the tonneau cover is actually attached to the tailgate itself, leaving you a nice open boot space to be able to easily access. Now, the boot space is 456 litres, and if you tip down the 60-40 split folding rear seats, that will increase to 1,216 litres. That's pretty good, actually, and it's above what many others in this segment will offer. But it doesn't end there because there's a really useful feature in the Puma, which carries across to the ST. You can pop up the boot floor here, and it reveals this huge, storage space in the bottom of the floor. And what's even more useful is that you can actually lift up the cover on the bottom of it, the rubberized cover, and in the base, there's actually a plug hole. So you can throw in your money gear, you can put in any dirty bike gear or football gear or anything like that. You can leave it in there. And then when you get home, you can literally hose the whole thing out and it all comes out straight to bottom. This is a really practical idea. It's so simple, but it works so well. And it's really good that even the Puma ST gets to retain this feature. The rear passenger space is quite reasonable. Um, it's easy to get your feet in under the seats. And this driving seat is set up for my driving position. I am five foot nine, and I have still a reasonable amount of space for my knee room. There are also pockets on the backs of both front seats, but in the back, there's only a small little cubby space here. There's no ventilation. There's no USB charging ports back here. So just something to bear in mind if you always have passengers in the rear that want to use the facilities. The headroom, well, it's again, not bad. I'm five foot nine and I have about that much headroom left even when I sit back. So it is quite spacious, even for adults and kids should find it. A little bit roomier again. Both of the rear outer seats also have isofix points. Then moving to the front of the Puma ST. It's got a pretty much a standard layout but the big thing you'll notice in comparison to the regular Puma are these seats. They are really really sporty. They're a little bit tricky to get into so getting in and out I think is gonna you know that side bolster there does get in the way they're manually adjustable there is a fair bit of adjustment in them so it's pretty easy to get your driving position sorted and yeah look they look really great too and um, you've got you know obviously you've got the recaro badges there on the side you've got that nice kind of suede alcantara material in the center it does get a little bit warm but they're i think they're great seats uh, obviously there's manual six-speed gearbox the center console and all the layout of the dash is pretty straightforward 
the sync system for the infotainment system works really well the touch screen is nice and quick and then you've got some other details like this kind of carbon fiber like inserts you've got an upgraded bno stereo and then you've got uh pretty decent door cards you've got you know leather material there in the armrest some of it is a little bit plastically plasticky in places um but for the most part it does feel pretty well put together you've got a pretty decent steering wheel as well uh, it feels really nice in your hand it feels quite chunky a bit like a bmw in that way um it's slight flat bottom on it too but all the controls are very easy to use you've got that fully digital instrument display as well again that is configurable and it changes depending on what mode you're in uh, so you've got the st badging there in the bottom um so yeah it's you know there's a nice bit of detail throughout the cabin uh, it does feel pretty well made yes it is a little bit plasticky in bits but you can live with that you've got ford performance branding here on the sills as well and then you've uh, you've got a little bit of a tight footwell as well so you've got obviously it's manual you've got three pedals but they're all pretty closely together so you can do a bit of heel and towing a curious thing to drive the Puma ST. The standard car was actually surprisingly good to drive and well this has all of the expected treatment although I think Ford has maybe gone a little bit too far. They did not want to make this just a quick in a straight line crossover. This is from the ground up meant to be you know, the full embodiment of what we're used to seeing from ST products. I mean, the Fiesta is, in my book, still one of the best hot hatches I've ever driven. Ford has paid a lot of attention to sharpening up how the Puma ST rides, basically because it's a crossover. So, you know, this was originally a jacked up Fiesta, which they've then had to make sportier, so they're now bringing it back down again. And to that end, it has much stiffer suspension than you'll find in the regular Ford Puma. Now, that's good when you're always going to be in attack mode. In fact, you know, laterally speaking, it's 40% stiffer on the back end. There's very trick bits like Hitachi frequency sensitive dampers, and it works well within a certain set of circumstances because when you're driving it really hard and you're really trying to push it along, particularly on a good, undulating and twisting road like this it does all come together very very well the body control is pin sharp but it is generally speaking a very firm riding crossover and almost to the point that i think some people will just find it a little bit too stiff for everyday life it's fine on good roads but we don't always have really good roads and when you're driving it around a city for example well it crashes over bumps even small drains like that you know you just get a bit of head toss it's just laterally from side to side you're being thrown and you know you're kind of glad in some way that these recaro seats are as supportive and as comfortable as they are suspension aside it's this engine that makes this car stand out the way it does it's really quite a sweet little motor okay it's only a 1.5 liter three cylinder engine it's turbocharged but it's full of character and actually that turbocharging means that okay it's got 200 horsepower but it's the 320 newton meters of torque that really makes this car sing it loves to rev and using this six-speed manual has such a nice precise feel to it as well that it just encourages you to want to play with the gears and it really is a car that you just want to have fun with it loves powering out of corners it's on michelin sport 4s tires so grip is not an issue puts power down very very well and having that differential on the front it means you can really start to exploit that power now it does as you drive it harder it does kind of fight you a little bit that steering it's always trying to get back to dead center so even when you're going through corners and going through faster bends you can feel it always doing something it is communicative in one way i just wish it was maybe they could just dial it back ever so slightly but when you do get this car 
in the right set of corners in the right roads it's quite surprising what this thing will do for a crossover of its size okay it's not quite the same driving experience as what you're going to get in the fiesta st that's an absolute benchmark car but this is a good alternative i just think that when you do again come back off that when you're not setting your special stage time and you do just want to drive it normally that's kind of when that stiffness comes back into the car and you start to become a little bit more aware then of all, you know how all the bumps come through the car and it just feels a little bit too stiff for your everyday driving and at the end of the day this is a car that you've got to drive every day this isn't just a track toy that you're going to be taking out on the weekend or early on a Sunday morning for a blast and that's where this car kind of falls down a little bit they've just gone a bit too far to make this a performance crossover there's also a small fact that this car is the guts of 45,000 euros in Ireland which is considerably more than the 26,000 euro starting price that the Puma has and is still the best part of 10,000 euros more than what a Fiesta ST is going to set you back and it's probably not fair to compare the two directly if you do need more interior space compared to a Fiesta there's obviously the Focus ST this well it's just a little bit different if you want to know more about the Ford Puma ST head over to our website which is completecar.ie you'll find a link to that in the description below and we'd love to hear what you think about this car so tell us in the comments below are you looking for a hot performance crossover just like this or are you happier just to live with a normal hot hatch we'd love to know what you think so do tell us and in the meantime please do hit the subscribe button if you don't already and after you do that if you hit the notifications you'll be alerted next time we upload a video review thanks for watching